Um, welcome to this talk. I hope you enjoyed the keynote this morning. Uh, we'll discuss something a bit different, but that's really a core part of all Docker, that is all the images. Uh, and I will at least show you my vision of images and how I can better understand how we can better understand how it's working. Um, so first, um, I'm Eve. I'm senior software engineer at Docker. Uh, I'm working right now on Docker Scott, so you probably see some part of that in the, in the keynote. I'm working on the, the CLI and the GitHub Action and some backend stuff on, on Docker Scott. And before to really dig into the, the topic, just to explain a bit why, uh, I mean, why it can be interesting to care about the images. For, I mean, four years I working at Docker, I work on several different um, parts of Docker. Uh, I work on the registry like, to find inconsistencies inside the storage of images. So it was all about images. I work on publishers, so like DVPs and the software open source program. Uh, we created some analytics, uh, like the pool analytics, and yeah, it was all about the images, the tags, the pool, etc. And now I'm working on Duck and Scott, but it's the same thing. I mean, I'm still working directly on the images, uh, working on the tags, and how we can extend images, add more content inside images. So during all this year, at the beginning, I mean, the images were just something kind of magical. I mean, like when you just start to Docker, you Docker run something, you don't know what an, what's in, um, inside an image. But the more I learn, the more I, I work on this different topic, every time we go with the same question, what is an image exactly? What's the relation between a tag and an image? And it's also that looks magical. Sometimes you don't understand exactly how it's working, and in fact, it's kind of simple. I mean, it's easy to just dig into these images and better understand all that stuff. And the more you understand that, most of the time, the more you can do your work properly. I mean, and more, I mean, let put the magic sometimes a bit on the side to be just better on that side. Um, just what this talk is not a better of, about. I mean, we will discuss like um, images, I mean, a push and pull, uh, what happens when we uh, pull, uh, push a new version of an image, uh, how we can extend, how we can go beyond the images, the, the way we think most of the time. But what will, it will not be about is the specification. If you want to see something about the specification, I mean, everything is on GitHub. It's pretty well explained. I mean, I will just not listen to the, the full spec. It doesn't make sense here. Uh, and one last thing. Um, there's the slide available, so like if you prefer like to watch the slide or if you want to see them later, I mean everything is already available uh, online, so you can just uh, get that. This is the exact same as I will present today. Um, just check that. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, first, if I just find my cursor there. Okay. Uh, so the, the first thing, I mean, if uh, at least that's the way I approach the, this prime and learning in, in many cases. If I want to learn about images, the first thing I need is an image. Uh, so let's build a simple image, something, I mean, you, I mean, most of people already know to do, so I will not explain the build itself. So we build an image, I mean, it's based on another one, base image, for multiple architectures. That's something, I mean, for several years, I mean, a lot of people don't really uh, look at uh, multi-platform images, but no, especially with like, uh, since people have Mac M1, they start to have another architecture on, the, on their own laptop than the compute. We have also more and more like RM compute. So we start really to need multi-platform uh, images all the time. So we will do that. We will just create some kind of basic image. Um, I will add some uh, supply chain materials. So I will not dig into the detail. I mean, there's other talks if you really want to understand what it means, but just to have a real, real example. Uh, and we publish that under different tags. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, so I have just a very simple Docker file. I mean, it just doesn't really matter what's inside. I mean, it's just uh, from Golang uh, image. I'll just add some packages uh, and do some, I mean, JavaScript code. I mean, there's nothing really special. Uh, and so it's my build. So something you probably already know, I mean, just Docker build. My two platforms, as I said, so Linux AMD64, Linux RM64, um, D2 attest. So I will not dig into real detail of that, but 
Uh, it's just the way we can just add the SBOM. Uh, so it's all the details of the image, like all the packages, the uh, licenses, etc. And the provenance, it's more the, the um, everything we, we record at the time of the build. Like what was the digest exact of this image, etc. Um, and we have four tags. Uh, I, I chose this, this tag. I mean, it's like, um, it, it's not necessarily what you do most of the time, but when you're using, uh, most of the time, the base images, they are done that way. So like if you, if you take the Alpine image, you can pull the Alpine latest, Alpine 3, Alpine 3 and 10, et cetera. That's just the way you can uh, select your kind of channel and, and pick the one you want. So just replicate that. Uh, it's, I mean, we, we can do whatever we want with tag, but just as an example. And I will push that. Um, just one quick thing. I mean, we have some localers, et cetera. I just, I have my own registry on my laptop, so just to avoid some kind of network issue as much as possible. Uh, so let's build that. Um, so it should be pretty fast. Yeah, pushing. Okay, so I have my image, and I mean, I can just run it, and yeah, hello. Okay. So that, that's the beginning uh, of the story. I have my image, and now what I want uh, is to understand what's inside. So what we will do is to open this image, not run it, but reopen the internal of the image and start to navigate inside the code. <clears throat> so to do that, I mean, it's, it's quite simple. We just create uh, a local directory, and there's the docker save command that exists. So the docker save will take an image, uh, put that in a tar, in an archive, and we'll just unarchive it and see what's inside. Uh, so, um, extract, uh, all right, so I'm just creating the, the local directory, my docker serve, and just unarchive it. So that's all the content of my image. Uh, so it's a lot of blobs, uh, and just a few of the files, and, <coughs> and just see, uh, I will just open, I mean, VS Code to see that, oh, it's on the wrong screen. Let me just, all right, uh, just one take my screen, it's not the right one. All right. It will, yes, this one. All right, okay, so this is the, the content of an image when you enter it. So the, most of the time you don't see that because there's a lot of different files, so we just uh, store them differently. We'll see a bit later how it's stored like inside a registry, but that's one image. If you docker save, that's what you have in, in your account. So we'll start just very briefly with the OCI layout. So OCI means Open Container Initiative. It's now the specification of the, of the images. Before there was also the Docker images, uh, but everybody is using OCI now. It's the, the best specification we have. And we just say, okay, this is the version one, one zero, okay, it's fine. The manifest.json is the Docker Im image way. The index.json is the OCI way. So we'll just go to the, the index.json. Um, so you see there's a lot of JSON everywhere. Um, so this part, I mean, it's just the entry point. There's nothing really special. I mean, it just say, uh, this is the image I just uh, extracted. And the thing we will have all time is media type and digest, and also size. So every time we have some content somewhere, we'll just create the digest of this content, and this is the way we reference any content. The cool thing with that is if we have two times the same content, we have the same digest, and so we don't duplicate as much as possible the content. And we will have a lot of time uh, media type. So in that case, we just say, okay, this is an image index. This is the index. This is where I should start. So, and that's what we will do all along the way. We will just uh, pick this digest, look at inside, and so on. So pick this one, uh, the three eight. Oh, yes. Um, just for that. Okay. So it's again a JSON file. Uh, we just can check that this is uh, image index. And it's just basically 
an index of manifests. It's just a list of manifests. That's all we have inside. Uh, and for all the manifests, what we have is the platform. So we already started here with the multi-platform aspect of the image. We're just doing, so this one is the Linux MD64. Below we have the RM64. And for each of them, we just say, okay, this, this will be the image manifest. And this is the digest of this manifest. For the RM64, I mean, it's exactly the same thing, just a different digest, just a different content. We also have two other manifests that are a bit different because the platform is unknown. So unknown means, I mean, except if you have some computer that has an unknown platform, it's meaning you can't run it. So it's something a bit different. It's still an image manifest, but we will dig a bit um, deeper in, inside the content of that letter. But we have other manifests in your image. Um, they have some annotations. That's what we can see here. Uh, we have a type, so it's an attestation manifest. So, I mean, during my build, I just add this dash dash attest, so we can think that this is the same thing. And what's interesting in this annotation, I mean, the annotation, you can just store everything you want. There's no real rules on that. But we have one that is a reference. So there's the digest of this manifest, and we are storing a second digest. But this one, the C1, uh, one, it's this one. So we start to create links between the different manifests inside my image. Um, and what we will do with that uh, is we'll start to build some kind of visual representation of the image. So the first thing we, we display is the image index. And then we have all four manifests. And we have this relation between two of them each time. So one manifest for the MD64, one manifest for the RM64. And the two attestation manifest, one pointing to this one and one pointing to this one. That's the base of our image. Uh, but let's uh, go a bit deeper. So I will just pick the MD64 by default, I mean, but I, I could have picked any, any other. So let's uh, go down into this digest. So let's see. Uh, where is my year here? Okay. Um, so it's the same thing. I mean, it's again a JSON file. Um, it's just different. I mean, this time we have two main uh, main parts. One is config, one is layer, and I mean, we just have the the media type that is manifest as expected. Um, the config is everything you put on top of the content of your image when you want to run it. Uh, so if we go to this file, uh, so DB7, where is my DB7? Uh, and no, it's not a Docker file. <clears throat> so again, JSON file. And we'll find like, everything we need to run the image. Like this is the environment variable. This is my command. So it's exactly what we can find inside the, the Docker file. Or I mean, with the environment, the build ads, or whatever we, we display. Like the, I mean, we set the working directory. I mean, this is. Uh, or we run the image exactly. And we also have some content, the history part. So it's all the different layers, uh, all the different instructions we have in, inside the Docker file that are stored in, in, this, uh, in this blurb. And last part, last part we have this DeFIDIS. DeFIDIS is the uncompressed uh, digest of the content. So it's exactly the content that will be part of the final image uh, at the end. Well, yeah, so this is the config. Uh, just don't set that. Uh, and we have some layers. So I guess most of the people already at least heard about layers because that's a pretty common term. Layer is just a set of blobs of content. We'll not go deeper inside. I mean, here in the layers, I mean, it's JZIP. It's just archives. It's all the files of the images. So. We have different layers and we combine them. So some layers can add files, some layers can modify files, some can uh, remove files. And we, we just tag all the layers and we have the final file system of your image. Then with the file system and the config, we can run the image. <coughs> so if we just go back to the here, that's what, uh, what is your image. So 
We have the index. We pick the manifest for the MD64 uh, platform. And then we have one config blur and several layers. It's what we have all the time. If you look at the RM64, we will have exactly the same thing. Most of the time, that's what people call image. This is really the asset that you can, you can run at the end. The goal is, oh, we get this asset or we store this asset, but that's what you want to run at the end. And if we combine all that, so like one or, or multiple images and the index, this is what we call multi-platform image. This is just one step on top of that. Um, but let's have a look also at the, these two ones, the two attestation manifests. Um, so if we go back here, uh, this is, no, this is my image. <coughs> I just, okay, I just closed the, the other one. So I'm just going back to the index. I will just pick like the, this one, for instance. I mean, it's, it should, it's an image manifest, so it should be the same thing. Uh, so EF, uh, where is my EF? Yeah, here. So yeah, again, JSON file, image manifest. We have a config, and we have some layers. So if we go to the config, it will be slightly different. Uh, so this one, just because there's almost nothing inside. This is not runnable. I don't care about environment variable. I don't care about commands. I don't care, I don't know, about entry points or so. This is not a runnable image. But this is still an image. And if I can just close that. And if we look at the layers, they are slightly different. The first thing is it's a completely different media type. But it's still a layer. But it's in total. So it's, not, it's absolutely not the, the content with all the files. Um, we have the digest, I mean, as expected. And we added, again, some annotations. So annotation is just a way to give metadata on top of that, saying, OK. Because we have two layers here. Both of them are in total, but they are not the same content. Um, so one of them is the SPDX document. So this is the SBOM, the software bill of material. This is all the packages of my image. The other one is the SASA provenance. So all the context uh, at build time. Uh, I, I can show you very briefly what we have inside, but that's not really the purpose of this all. But just uh, it means we can store everything we want in there. So it's, no, no, it's not YAML. Uh, it's JSON. It's JSON everywhere. <clears throat> all right, so this stuff is just a giant JSON file. Uh, I mean, not go through, I mean, the file, but it's just everything you have. I mean, you can store that. You can store everything you want. This is all the packages, uh, all the licenses, uh, where you can find them inside your image. This is some kind of metadata, but in a JSON file as a layer of an image. And it's the same thing for the provenance. So if we just try to complete this, this uh, diagram, for the attestation manifest, we have the same thing. This is not the same media type, but at the end, it's just one config blob, even if it's pretty useless, and two layers. So with that, this is what we can see. I mean, the, the only thing I, I didn't show in, um, in the internal is just the blob itself, I mean, the layers of the, the image to run, but it's just files, so we don't really care about that. But the thing that is interesting is, I mean, I have this image, um, I can run it, but what I want is to push most of the time. That's really important part of that. And just why to push to a registry? I mean, I, I have the Docker safe command. I can just archive that and put that in any server. But the cool thing with that is deduplication. That's the, probably the most important part. I mean, every content that is identical will produce an identical digest, so I will store it only once. At the level of a registry, this is huge because there's a lot of people creating the exact same content a lot of time, or just to reuse someone else's content. So we just deduplicate everything. What we also want is metadata. I mean, this, this image is just about digest. So if you don't want to just remember the exact digest of the image you want to run all time, we want this extra layer of metadata on top of that. And the last thing uh, is versions. We want to keep all versions of everything. Like if you, if you push your image on latest, 
Maybe tomorrow you push a new version of the latest, but you don't want to break people using the previous one. So you need to keep track of all the previous version all time. Obviously, we, there's a lot of more stuff on the registry. I mean, it can be authentication, permission, etc. But this is really the, the base of that. Um, and we'll see how we, I mean, how we push an image directly to a registry. So <clears throat> it will be mostly to push all the blobs, all the content of the blob folder. I want to push that on my registry. So it will be the layers, the config, but also all the manifest. Basically, everything under my blob, I want to push that. And then I want to create the tags, all the metadata on top of that. So the way it will be stored in, in the registry, it's pretty similar to the, what we have. So if I just go back to the, uh, the content here, I mean, what we have is these blobs, SHA-256. Um, it's on, on the registry. <clears throat> it's roughly the same thing. We just have this extra level, intermediate level. It's just the two first characters. I mean, we just segment a bit the, the, the blobs. But at the end, it's exactly the same thing as you have locally. <clears throat> so this part, I mean, it's pretty. You just push all the blobs. You don't really care about what's inside. You just push all of them. Then when it starts to be very interesting is when you want to push the tags. Uh, so this is a bit more complex. I mean, there's just more layers. I mean, like the repo name, uh, and we have the tag. So I just represented, I mean, two. I mean, the, there's the 1, 0, then the 1, 0, 0 also I just push. And there's more stuff here. So if we just focus on, on just the letters to better understand that, the first thing interesting is that. So this is, I mean, the, the link uh, it's just the, the final file. I mean, the rest is just folder. So what you want is <clears throat> I, I want the current version of my tag called latest. This is this file. But sometimes I want the previous version of uh, my latest uh, index. So it will be this one. I mean, here we will just store all the different digests recorded to this tag. It will just make more sense a bit later when we we'll push different tags. Um, and if we put that together, this is the registry. This is exactly uh, what's inside distribution, so the open source part of the registry, but this is also exactly what we have on Docker Hub right now. This is stored exactly that way. So we have all the blobs, the repositories, and all the tags in between. And what's inside this link uh, files here, it's just the digest. So all these files link I ju just contain the digest of, my, mani uh, of my, my image, so maybe my image index. That's where you start to, to connect all the dots. <clears throat> so let's say we, we push an image. So we push the blobs, and then we, we stored under the manifest tag, so the different tags, the, the current version of each of them, and we just store the, in, the uh, version, I mean the index one, uh, the historical version of that. And now, what I want is to know how we can pull that. And in fact, it's, it's not that difficult. I mean, there's main, mostly three different steps. The first one is I want to translate my tag to a digest. Like if I pull Alpine latest, uh, I, I mean, I want to find this. I mean, everything is stored as, as a blob, referenced by its digest. So I need to know what is my digest. The second thing, uh, because we had multi-platform images, is I will get the, the index, and I want to know which, uh, which is the right platform I want to, to pull. Because maybe I just want to run for Linux RMD64, so I don't care about the others. I just want this one. So I will try to pick this one first. And then I will really download the content of the image. The first part is just um, to give me access to this config and layers. Once I have the, the config blob and the layers, I can combine them and run my image. So it's just a few HTTP requests. It's pretty simple. I mean, I just uh, do a head request on my uh, manifest latest. So I mean, manifest latest means the tag latest. And the answer will be, OK, this is, uh, let's make this is an image index. And this is the digest of your content. So what I get is this file. I just get the content of this file. So. Uh, I'm asking for the latest 
uh, tag, and I said nothing else, so I want the current version of this tag, so give me the content of this link, and this link just contain the digest of my index. <clears throat> so with that, I'm committing the tag the user is, is asking for to a digest, so I can get the digest. Uh, I can get the manifest by his digest this time, so I will do a get. I mean, the head request, we just written nothing else than the, the headers. Uh, now I will just get the, the manifest. So, um, yeah, this, I don't know if it's a bit small. Um, but basically, it's the image index we already show with the different uh, manifests inside and all of them with the different platform. So, what I get here is this image index. Uh, so, I start to uh, really go down inside my image right now. Uh, and what I want in this, in this list of manifests is to pick the right one for my platform. So I'm on Linux MD64, I will just pick this digest here. And now I will just continue that way until I, I, I go to the final digest. So uh, this, this is the image manifest, that's what I want. So we'll just get uh, the same way uh, by digest and I will get this image manifest so the image manifest is this part of the, of the image. And if I read it, I have the config with the digest. And I have all the layers with their digest. So with that, I will just continue to do some get requests. This time, it's not at the same place. I mean, it's inside the blobs part. This is really where the download starts. The rest is just how I can get to this information. This is the real one I want to get to run an image. And this is what you saw when you docker pull an image. Uh, in that case, docker pull with the platform MD64. And I will see all this line with some, I mean, part of digest, it's just short digest. And the, I mean, in that case, I mean, it's the end, so it's download complete. So it will be get the image index, get the image manifest, get the config blob, get the layers, etc. That's everything we just did. I mean, we, we can't do that by hand. I mean, it's just a few requests. I mean, not that difficult. A few requests, just read some JSON files. I mean, that's what Docker is doing when you Docker pull, exactly. Then, I mean, you can also, I don't know, do some parallel stuff, etc. You can make it that complex, but if you want to write something that will pull an image, it's just that simple. And with that, we just get all the rest of our image. So just, I mean, this is just the kind of summary of the, of the pull, but this is all the requests we have to to make to just pull an image. So yeah, nothing that difficult. I mean, that's one thing I'd like uh, people to understand that is the images are pretty simple. As everything is just addressable, it just, you just have to know the digest. And to know the digest you want to pull, you just have to read some JSON file and that's it. <clears throat> now, what is interesting is, I mean, I pull the image latest. But what if I want to pull now the image one? The thing is, we build one image, and we tag it four times. I pull the latest, and now I want to pull the, the version one. So we'll just go, I mean, to the, these three exact same steps. So first one, we, we convert the tag to digest, so it will be one and not, and not latest this time. We find the right platform, and we download the content. But the cool thing is, there's only one request to, to do here. I mean, because when we will convert the tag to the digest, this is the exact same digest and, than latest, and it has been stored on my machine. So I have this digest, I will just read again the same file. So this indirection is really important, I mean, because this is really the same file. I will read the same file, I will read, I mean, pick the right platform, I already have the digest of the, I mean, the blobs, the manifest of this platform. I read the, the digest of the config blob of all my layers, but I already have everything locally. So at the end, it's only one single head request, and I have my new image. So obviously, it's a kind of extreme case because most of the time you don't pull two times the exact same image. But if you have an image that just add some content, and we'll start a bit later, I mean, we already see that some uh, request will not make them because we already have some part of the content locally. <clears throat> so what we did, I mean, whatever it's latest, it's one, it's just we start with this link. I mean, in that case, once you have the latest, 
You just get this link. This is the same content. It's done. <clears throat> so now we can do something a bit interesting because, I mean, that's good. We have our image. We are able to push it. We are able to pull it. But what I want is to do a new image because, I mean, I don't know. Uh, there's something to fix, uh, whatever the reason. So let's do that. Let's do some just very quick changes. So uh, I will be quite simple on that. Hello, Docker Kernel <clears throat> I will just rebuild that. So this is the same build command, except one line. I will, I mean, I will have the same tags except this one. So this is my new, my new image. Maybe it's a very important fix. I want this, this bug fixed, so it will be called 101. But I still want people that choose to use maybe the tag one to still have this image. So I will re-tag letters one and 100, but I will create a new tag 101. But I will not change the 100. So let's see what, I mean, just, yeah. First I need to build it. It will be better. <clears throat> Okay, um, I mean, I can run it. Yeah, I mean, it's minus one. I mean, I, I didn't put the tag, but it means latest. So this is the new version of my latest image. Um, and we can, ex uh, no, it's just the other shortcut. Okay, I can just extract this new version, so the 101. Basically, it's exactly the same thing. I mean, the same structure, at least. And what we can see, oh, I just prepared the comparison. If I'm just able to type the right one, inspect diff. All right. Uh, yes. So I, I just mixed the two. I mean, the, the first image I extracted and the second, just to see what are the differences. And what we can see is we have, I mean, we have new blobs. It's a new image, there's a new content, uh, there's a new tag. But some of them, I mean, all the ones in, in white are exactly the same. They existed in the, in the first version of the image, and they still exist in the second version. So locally, I mean, if I docker save, I just duplicate everything. But the idea is there's some content that is the same. I only change one part of the docker file. The base image is the same, the packages I added are the same, um, a lot is really the same, but some of them is not. So we'll not go through all the details, uh, but this is what changed and not. So some layers there didn't change. So the base image, the packages, etc. But all the rest changed. Like my manifest is not the same. The final image, I mean, like, let, let's say the, this one here is where I just changed the DockerCon to DockerCon LA. So it's a new one, new content, new digest. As, uh, as I refund them, it's, I mean, the, I mean, I changed the digest of this layer, so the manifest changed, I mean, the content changed, so the digest of the content changed, etc. So there's some stuff that is the same, software that is not. And the attestation are different because, like, we build at a different time, there's some timestamp uh, in there because that's what we want to know, so the content changed, but, um, yeah, we, we just try to, I mean, to limit as much as possible the changes everywhere. And if I push this image to the registry, that's what I'm doing. So uh, I'm pushing the, this 101. So this is what we saw just before. <clears throat> so it's the current version, the index one. So with the digest, I mean, it's just the historical version. But I didn't change the 110 because, I mean, I not retag it. But I retag the latest one. So I, I did two changes. The first one is this link, this is the current version, changed. When now I want to pull this image, I want the new version, I don't want the previous one. So I also added this new version in the historical versions, but I still keep the previous one. So if I, uh, if I try to pull the latest uh, by, I mean, by saying I want this digest of latest, it still works, it's still there. But by default, it will be the new one. So if, uh, if we look at the, the, I mean, the relation between 
uh, these tags and the different blobs. So I have, for instance, on the 100, I mean this link, that go to one digest. <clears throat> and these new links just point to another digest. And in latest, I just have both. So this is where we, I will store all the versions. And so yeah, that's, I mean, I just said, I mean, this is quite common. Uh, this is sometimes a really good practice. Like you want to pin an image. So we'll say, okay, this is this, uh, this tag, but with this exact digest. So if someone change the digest, pu uh, the tag, push a new version, my build will remain the same, especially with lettuce. So people sometimes really push a lot on lettuce. I still want, sometimes I, I say like, I validated my image with this digest and not another one. So I want this stuff exactly. That's why we are storing everything. <clears throat> Uh, let me just, yeah, check time. Um, so this is the way uh, we, let's say, um, create an image, push, and pull an image. But there's something that is a bit interesting um, because we can go way beyond that. I mean, that is the part most of the, peop of the people are seeing right now on images. It's like I have images to run them. I just embed some stuff, but most of the time it's just my different layers with files and the config, and that's what I want. But in reality, we can go way beyond that. And we can uh, see that in two different ways. One of them is we're not forced to store container images. We can store whatever we want. I mean, it's just as soon as you respect the specification, as soon as you respect the, um, the manifest, image manifest, and image index, the rest is exactly what you want. The second thing that I personally found really, really interesting is how we can extend the container images. Because we can store inside the image, along the, I mean, very closely to the data of the image, we can also store everything we want. So just to give you some example of that. Um, so first, we can store everything. There's uh, one new command, for instance, in Docker Compose, when you can publish your Docker Compose. So what you will do is it will be an OCI image containing your Docker Compose YAML file. And it's just an image. So uh, if you look at the, at the manifest, uh, this is my image manifest. There's the new artifact type. Just say, OK, this is Docker Compose project. OK, that's fine. There's a config, uh, a config blob, as expected. Just the size is two. So let's say there's just nothing inside. Um, uh, and yeah, basically, I mean, we're just storing the annotation here. I mean, the annotation that is just the compose version used. And we have some layers, as all the others image. But the media type this time, is, it's a compose file YAML. It's not a JSON. It's really your compose file. And this is the digest. So if you go to find this digest, this blob, and you read that, this is your YAML file but stored as an image. So once it's stored as an image, it's when you can share it across all the different registry. You can use the same tools. If you have a tool that just follows the different links, the different requests to, I mean, translate your, your tag to a digest, go down to the, the manifest, etc., it's working the same way. So if you want to pull a compose file or an image, this is exactly the same thing. So that's a new command. Uh, so I think it's dash dash publish on Docker Compose now, so you can test that. This is one thing. Uh, if, you, if you have a Mac, you're probably already using Homebrew, but Homebrew can also be stored as image manifest. So again, this is not an image. You will have different layers, uh, but you have it. I mean, and the cool thing with that is, again, you will store that on the registry. You will have the deduplication because the deduplication is really inside the protocol, inside the way we're storing images. So it's just out of the box. And registry are just everywhere right now. So you can have Homebrew as an OCI image manifest also. Um, we can have a Synapse. So I, mean, I will not go into the detail of that. Synapse is a way to combine multiple images in, in kind of one big package. So to have one, I mean, one application that maybe contains multiple images. But the thing is, we can have image index, referencing image index, referencing image index, and so we can store image in image in image if you want. So we can combine a lot of images inside one single asset. 
And as long as you just follow the different links, it just works. So just another way, I mean, we, we don't need to create another tool to do that. I mean, we just use the exact same registry. And there's more, I mean, there's already more. I mean, we're using that for Helm charts. You can store your Helm chart in the registry along with all your images at the same place. Uh, we can store WASM module that are a bit different than the container images, uh, or Docker volume, dev containers, etc. So there's a lot of stuff we can store inside the same registry. So the registry, in reality, is kind of agnostic of that. And the specification, maybe if there, there's some stuff to change, but we can store everything you want there. But the really cool thing, at least from my point of view, is to extend images. So if we go back to the first part, the first image, we have all these four layers. So that's why the, the two attestations, uh, so where we store the, the build materials, roughly. Um, the really good thing is it's stored inside the, the full image. So it's not something like we store somewhere else. Um, I want like the, the S-bomb, I want the, cont I mean, the description of my image inside my image. I don't want that somewhere else. So you can do that. It's really cool because you're using, again, the exact same tool. When you uh, reference an image, I can choose to pick the, the part that I will run, but I, I can also pick the part I will just analyze, like to display vulnerabilities, for instance. But the cool thing with that, I mean, at least my question I have, and probably for you, is what else we should store? I already did some hacks, like how we can embed documentation inside the image. So you just refund the image, and you have the, the full documentation of the image, how you can run it. Maybe you can use that to store run books or examples of whatever. The thing is, you can just understand that you can store everything you want very, very closely to the, the runnable image. And then, it's just a few, a few requests, and you can create your own tool. So maybe, I don't know, you want to create a tool for, to display documentation. Maybe you want to create a tool to, I mean, whatever. I'm really curious to see what people can build with that because it's very simple. I mean, images are most of the time something quite magical. It's just kind of black box. But it's just, just a bunch of JSON files. So it's very easy. I mean, you can even create, if you really want, an image by hand. I mean, you just create your content, create the, I mean, get the digest of that, and create a JSON file, and boom, you have your image. It's just that simple. And just one... Last thing. Um, so at the first, uh, I mean, at the first look of the image, we have this OCI layout. And we saw also some annotations. Annotation, the problem is it's too generic. It's just, you can do, do just what you want. And the generality is good because, I mean, you can do what you want. But the downside is you can do what you want. So it's harder to create tools on top of that. So there's a new version of the specification. So it, I think it's not uh, out right now. So it's, uh, yeah, it's the new changes that will come to, to the specification. So it will be the 1.1. One, one. And it's really about that. So there's three main things. The, the, the first one is to help create non-container images. The second one is to create some very specific fields to create this relation, let's say, between the attestation and the, the right image inside. So, and I mean, once we have these fields, we can create the right API. So we will have some APIs just say, okay, I have this reference, but what I want to know is the, the, the relations between the different parts of my image. Right now you can create tools for that, but it's not standard in any way. So this is the new changes for the, for the, the specification that I guess will help to create new content, extend content, and yeah, and it's just, I mean, exciting moment. I mean, I, I'm really happy we, we see these changes, so we'll see what people will build with that. And that's the, the end. So thank you uh, to be here, and I hope we will just build a lot of new tools with all that stuff. Thank you. <laughs>